So there I was, in the middle of the desert, hunting wild poblanos. We have officially progressed onto part two of our Blue Apron meal delivery. This recipe is curry deviled chicken, which I'm actually really excited for because it sounds awesome. You can see our variety of uh, prepackaged, pre-measured, bagged ingredients ready to go. This one's a little more involved than the last one because this, unlike that pasta bowl, has a bunch of sides that I get to make with it. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Ow! Step one, scream into the void. Ah! Okay, but for real, we need to start by repositioning the oven racks into the top third and the bottom third. I don't know what that means, but I counted all of mine. And there are exactly six shelves, which means I just put one from the top and one from the bottom, I guess. Don't talk to me. We prepare our vegetables first, as always. So, let me rinse these off, actually. That's what I need to do. Oh, whoa, what's this? I think that's medium dice. I don't really know what they mean by that, but okay. So the next thing we're doing is putting together the tomato chutney. So we will start by throwing our pre-measured mayonnaise in. At this point, with putting in the tomato chutney, it says to put in as much as you want to give it a little more spice, because this is spicy apparently, but I tried some and it's not that spicy, so I'm going to use all of it, that way we get the most flavor from it. Because the rest of this is just mayonnaise and coconut milk, so you're not going to get much flavor from that, besides some sweetness. So the actual instructions wait for me to do the chicken before doing this. But if I do that, then these are just gonna sit here for like 20 minutes. So I'm doing this now, just so that they're done. So anyway, salt and pepper to taste as usual, and then toss to combine. So let's get this going. Somehow I'm out of Himalayan pink salt, so I'm just using regular seasoned salt, and that should be fine. I've officially cursed the dish. Oh no. With that done, we now set these aside for later and get started on the chicken. I don't lose you at this point because it does get a bit complicated. Let me go ahead and turn the oven on before I forget. Where's that button? So we're going to just melt the butter in the pan and then and then die. All right, I'm done. I was supposed to use a pot. So we start by taking our butter and we just melt that in here. This is fancy butter. Comes from, uh, what does it say? Creekside Creamery, little one ounce circles. While that's melting, I'm gonna mix our breadcrumbs up.
They're just kind of stirred around a little to evenly mix it. so that we can bake them. We reorganize this so that makes a little more sense. And now we just do the thing. I don't normally pat dry the chicken, but it makes it easier for sticking the uh, breadcrumbs on them. All right, let's get these in the oven. It says to dribble, drizzle them with olive oil first. I don't know how much olive oil, so I'm just gonna lightly attempt to do this. You can never have too much olive oil. Well, can you? Disclaimer, I skipped like five steps where it said to add salt and pepper because that's really unnecessary. Those now go on the top rack. We bake them for 18 to 21 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to get the rice going. I'm gonna use the same pot that I used earlier for melting the butter and the seasonings. The main difference with the recipe is that they wanted me to melt the butter and then transfer it into a bowl for dipping the chicken in but I thought it would be a better idea to turn my coconut rice into coconut curry spiced rice. The only downside is that now there's raw chicken residue in there. I don't know if I'm allowed to do this, but I guess if I die, I die. Once it's boiling, we turn it to low and put the top on. The only problem is, I don't actually have a top for this pot. Close enough. Lastly, I'll get the baking sheet ready for the vegetables. Now I'll just set this off to the side until they're ready to go in. Whoa, spicy. Hot, hot, very hot. We did it. One down, one to go. Now it's time for these to go on the bottom shelf. And those go in for about 17 to 19 minutes until they're about soft. We'll just wait for that timer to finish. Ugh. I see.
wispy. Today I learned that cabbage smells really bad when you bake it. I mean, I guess cabbage smells really bad no matter what we do to it. <laughs> so the last thing I need to do is add the ponzi sauce to it, I think. Yeah, so let me get this in a bowl so I can mix them together. So this bottle leaked in transit, so there's not as much as there should be in here, but that's fine, I'll just make it work, I guess. This is just some type of soy sauce, I guess. Okay, and with that, we are officially complete, so let's get our plate assembled. Look at this. This is too fancy. I feel overwhelmed. I've never made anything this fancy before. I'm so excited to try this though. It looks amazing. Well, thanks for watching me. And if you try this out, feel free to let me know how yours went, if you modified anything. Putting the leftover breadcrumbs into the rice is optional, but I mean, I paid for the whole meal kit, so I'm gonna use the whole meal kit. I forgot to put the tomato chutney on top, but there it is. That way you can see it with that. It's good though, I like it. Well, just as I expected, this one turned out awesome. I love it. One thing to note, the, I think it was two ounces of butter that it had me put in the pot for the um, chicken breading. I think maybe using less butter would have been better because there wasn't much uh, seasoning sticking on them compared to how much butter there was. It was kind of mostly butter and not a lot of seasoning. So maybe if the ratio was a little better, then they'd have a more even coating of butter. What was it? Butter curry and mustard all together. But I mean, the flavor was really awesome. I would totally make this like three or four more times. It was great. I love it. Other than that, what was it? Um, the rice. The breadcrumbs in the rice was kind of weird. I added a tiny bit more water since they absorbed a lot of the water, but cooking those in there gave the rice like little crispy patches, which was kind of neat and it was good. It wasn't bad. Also the little bit of seasonings left over worked good to kind of give the rice a little bit of extra flavor. But I mean, coconut rice by itself is really good too. Besides that, the Pepper and cabbage bendly is pretty good. I wouldn't mind having that again. Maybe if I had to like a vent so I could vent all those stinky gases outside of the house because man, my house smelled really bad after that. <laughs> but okay, that's about it. I hope you enjoy making this and feel free to let me know if you uh, adjust anything and it works out for you.